So just to follow up on my last video with the Predator Mud Mystic build, I'm going to show you the same team comp against two high level players using two of the, the meta builds at the moment, especially the first game with the Bloom. All right, so we're up against Smartass here and I'm on my other Smurf account that I actually originally just made to build, uh, to hold team builder comps because there's so many linked down below in the description. This will be a good example of this Predator Mud build versus the other meta team, the Phosphorus Bloom, which is still, everyone seem, still seems to be playing. And Smartass is one of the top players, so this will be a good example if we can beat this. And I did just beat him last game, so this will give him an opportunity to see if he thought he made any mistakes and see what he changes up. It'll be it'll mean we get to test this a lot better. So I start off with the Predator Mud and one of the Bolt Walks, and then round two we go three Bolt Walk. I'm not too sure if this is the strongest start, but it allows me to place my Berserkers with a bit better positioning uh, later. So he places his Phosphorus down, he, yeah, he, he probably win this round, well he won this round last time, but his positioning is a little bit different. Last game he mispositioned his Phosphorus a little bit, and he had him a little bit exposed. This time he's got his Bulwarks up front, and his Phosphorus is, was hitting my front line behind his Bulwark, which makes it a bit harder for me, but it's good to have this game to show this game after he's had a chance to change things up. So he's going to place, he's going to put a bunch of like invons and whatnot on this Carablu. So what I'm actually going to do, not go near him. May, it may result in me giving up this round, but I don't want a situation where, okay, he, he wins these, um, this battle here. If I put my Berserkers here, and he's got, you know, Invuln and Indomitable on his Caribou. I'm I'm going to be stuck hitting his Caribou, whereas he can AoE hit most of my uh, Lovials. And I can just do the same here. I can put Indomitable eventually on him. Because I know generally later I'm going to win in the overtime as well. Um, so I just need to not die by around four or five, and I just need to make it to the later. Um, I just need to not significantly outposition myself. If that makes sense. He got the meteoric strike one last game, and I still won. So he was had that on his Lalura, and that was going off all the rounds, and I still won. So I've actually something interesting I could do. I could do this. A little bit risky. Super risky. Now let's do this, and I may regret this. But <laughs> let's see how this goes. The four mod. What I need this to really work is the suppressors down, and the leech on my apon, um, because it'll it'll reduce the time for the phosphorus to cast and get that immunity off. Okay. Interesting. Okay, so I did the. I I guess I got lucky there because I didn't. You know, I was actually expecting him to buff his phosphorus a lot more there. As always, the team builder for this is linked down below, so you can click on that and import it. If you appreciate that and the video, make sure to like and subscribe. Um, but I still have the option to make this work if I can play it right. Get the right augments down. Ended up winning anyway. I think his two augments over here was the wrong move. If he had buffed up his Phosphorus, he would have won that. But it was a weird move for me to play to move my Berserkers over here, so I can see why he did that. I mean, it probably was the right play, and potentially just what I did was the wrong play. Now do I... This is a little bit messed up here, because I'm getting AoE down. Uh, I might just have to do this. A suppressor down, and I might actually need to buff my Ranger. Because if I can snipe a few things out, even if I lose the round, I just need to make it to next round. I've made a pretty big mistake here. I've I gambled a bit on would this work. I guess I've learnt that it's not really the best setup. Um, my Apon, I'm eventually going to get Leecher down. Okay, he swapped. He didn't like it either. 
Yeah, so I'll get Leecher down on my Apon, and he's going to be sapping the energy from the from the enemy the whole game every time he Omegas. And then with the Suppressors, the Frost Ferris will just cast much less. And it'll, um, it'll give me these openings between his Omegas where he's not immune. That potentially I can get a stun off, some slows. And it'll also just delay the round, his power, because he's going to put in a a uh, augment on him that gives him a mega power or attack damage every time he omegas. And if he's casting less, he's going to buff himself up a lot less as well. I mean, not to mention, all his other alluvials will be casting less frequently as well, so that's always good, but... This is the main... The main game plan is to nerf his phosphorus as much as possible. Just suppress his energy more. We'll get this leecher down. Could buff my ranger more. I'm worried here. Do I get indomitable down? I'll just get some pure attack here. He swap sides, that's a good play by him. This will be an interesting round. Sometimes it is, I mean positioning is really important. He's swapped a few times here. Um, I'm not saying it's wrong, but um, I guess I'm saying I probably disagree with it a lot of the time. Or I guess I'm saying I'm more inclined to get power on the board as opposed to change the positioning too much. Especially when you've got rounds in the bag. I mean, I guess he can't afford to lose another round. So he has to really optimize positioning, I guess. But um, he changed position a couple of times, and that means I've maybe I've got two extra augments on the board compared to him. Which, in my opinion, often is m much more powerful than kind of hoping that change positioning helps. But I don't think, either way, I don't think this matchup is too losable by me. I haven't lost to it yet. Alright, so we just beat Bloom against a top player and I thought I'd show you Invoker. See how we go against Invoker Colossus. I'm pretty sure that's what he's building um, with Toxic and he's got the Umbra option as well. I haven't actually played an Invoker team using this Predator Mud yet but I assume it should be fairly easy but hopefully we can learn from it and test this team out a little bit more. So round one, like normal, I'm playing my Predator and the Bulwark, Predator my Bulwark. And then round two, we actually get our Bulwarks out, the three wall Bulwark. I don't know how good I am at positioning my Kling, but I'm generally trying to place him a little bit further back so he stays alive and doesn't get targeted and eventually gets his Omega off. Um, but I'm probably not optimizing that that well. Uh, we'll see. But the opponent is often quite aware of it as well, so they're trying to not let that happen. The Kling, he's become quite popular. He um, he shoots off roots in two different locations. So similar to the Nar, he's the stage one version of Nar. No, not so good so far. I'm wondering if I go, I could go into Mystic instead. I have to swap later. There's no way I can swap now because we have the option to go Mystic instead of Predator. The reason I went Predator is because Ashimi was playing more Invoker, which he probably will now because they're his only carries he has. I mean, I could always. Yeah, okay. So it should be good now. If, I'm, if I don't win this round, I'll definitely win once I get uh, Mystic out, I assume. Because that's going to be a huge buff to my survivability. Because at the moment he's just out tanking me and then grinding me down with Toxic and the Colossus. Whereas my Mystics will counter that quite well. I'm just hoping I can get at least a couple things down. Yeah, nice. Uh, my Toxic should heal my Ripe Lance. Very good. Alright, that's a very good sign. I mean, if I'm winning already without my Mystic down. So he, he got the extra Toxic, but I don't think... It might bring him to four. No, he'll get to three Toxic, I think. Which isn't that much better. I mean, it's someone else stacking it. But it's not stacking it any faster necessarily on the individual. I think it's a bit of a bait. Especially when it allowed me to get this, this Visionary Vanguard. Which, I think my Monkeyer was doing a lot of damage last game. Last round, yeah he was. And he's not at risk in his position. But I probably... Uh, does this allow me... 
me just hold off on that augment for now. That's better, yeah. If I had to place the augment down, I wouldn't have got my mystic down. I think mystic is a better move. And I can see who's surviving the longest and who's the safest to put this augment down this round. Alright, he's kind of hit a power at the moment. But I hit his... Um, Hit a point in the game where he he needs to to maximise his to actually get a lot of power down with his jewel of. I think my monkey here got targeted by the jewel of. He was in the way of it. Let's go the visionary vanguard and the indomitable on my monkey here, and I might just place down less energy. Actually, I'll undo that, and I'll actually put down, I'll upgrade my Ranger, and I can still put down the Lesser Energy. Yeah, I don't necessarily want to invest too heavily into my Ranger. I could put the armor on him, I'm just not sure if he's getting, he's still quite squishy. I'm hoping he'll fit in here, and I'm hoping he'll target the Jeweleth, and I hope he doesn't get tagged by their first beam. I've got the less energy, so it's delaying that first beam for a little bit at least. Yeah, he's targeting there. So I'm getting mud down on the Jeweleth, which is slowing his attack speed. And I killed him anyway. My Ranger just won pretty much two shot him. The Shiv got buffed. Or the Shiv and the, um, or the Dagger, I think it's called. It got buffed this patch, so it was already quite good, and now it's in a build, like a team build like mine, that's relevant and good on its own. And it was already a good last patch anyway. We just didn't really have a build that made it super good. So definitely don't underestimate that on the Ranger. I was originally building this team more Mystic, with my, as my Ranger Mystic, but I'm starting to think Predator is just... Um, better in most cases. In the mirror matchup, I did have a mirror matchup and Predator seemed to be the way to go. So if you if you play in this team and you get a mirror matchup, I would suggest going Predator instead of the Mystic using the stuff. We may as well buff up my Ranger again for fun and because he did so well last game. He's probably going to, I imagine, put like an Indomitable down on his Jeweleth. Just delay them even more. Less energy, less energy. I should get my another Indomitable down. I'll go attack speed and Indomitable on him. On the Griller. I think what he really wants to do, it's hard with his team build, but you really want to fill all these gaps. So if he could somehow... Yeah, he's trying to do it now. My Ranger might still fit in here, because the Ranger is so small. Oh, no. I'm in the middle there somewhere. Yeah, so that's a lot better by him. It costed him some mastery points, and it's hard with this team because you're not setting up the jeweler first. I've actually got a video on this Colossus Invoker. So you somehow need to position everything perfectly without your jeweler already down. And it's very hard to do. You almost have to screenshot your final positioning and place it perfectly before you even place your jeweler down to fill all those gaps. So you can see you did a lot better that round. We may even take it. It's close. I should win this one. Very close. Okay. So a lot better. You can see how much of a difference that makes with the positioning. Just filling all those gaps. Gonna get Beecher down. Get attack speed here. And some physical resistance, or energy resistance, some extra health on everyone. Yeah, let's just delay their first cast on both of these. You know what, I'm gonna give him a bit more resistance. And maybe I, I didn't really pay attention to my ranger positioning. Oh, okay. Okay, nice. So he swapped out. He's mini Jeweler, but he's ruined his positioning now. I guess he felt he had to try something desperate. But he's 
Oh yeah, I've got mud on his Slayer, on his um, Umbra already, so. And I got to snipe out his Jeweler, so. I guess he had to try something. But I don't think that was the move. I think just augments, more augments. He almost won the last round. Should get more augments down. I think, again, people prioritize this changing positioning a little bit too high, but it was the last round. He had to he had to do something, so the Hail Mary change of positioning and team comp, but yeah. So, yet to find a counter again to this team, and it's looking more and more likely like it's the best build at the moment. I think I mentioned in previous videos there is a way to build this with Colossus instead of Bulwark. So you have, you take out the three Bulwark that I have, and you put in two Colossus, and it gives you a third Mystic as well. And I'm yet to play that mirror matchup, so I don't, maybe that team's better, but I haven't tried it. I'm, I'm preferring the three Bulwark. It's cheaper to hit your power points, and the Bulwark buffs the whole team, whereas Colossus only buffs two, buffs themselves, not the whole team. If you enjoyed that, make sure to like and subscribe, and the team builder is down below. See you next time.